Welcome traders. In this video today, we're going to be talking about how to trade supply and demand like the banks. This is going to be focused on a price action trading strategy, how to correctly find, draw and trade supply and demand zones. Supply and demand is a strategy that allows you to pinpoint where the banks are getting into the market, giving you the chance to get into big trades alongside the big players. With supply and demand, demand is going up, supply is coming down. When the price is going up, it means the demand is outweighing the supply, and that's when there's a price rise. On the other hand, when price is going down, the supply is outweighing the demand, which causes the price to decline. When demand and supply are equal, they reach a balance point, which is this consolidation where the buyers and the sellers become equal. The banks have a big challenge. Now learning to trade with the banks, you need to understand the psychology of the banks and how they work. Changes in supply and demand will only occur when the banks and other big players buy or sell. The retail traders can't move the market because they don't have enough buying or selling power. Banks can't place their full positions at once because the amounts they trade with are so large they have to break their trades into smaller amounts and place each trade individually around similar price range. Let me show you. Here's an example. The bank will enter a position here. Price will come back. They'll enter a position here, enter position here and here. So they will take their large amounts and they'll break it into these mini selling points and they'll focus on the similar range. This is how the banks can break up one huge position into smaller positions to make it easier for them to play the market. Banks position sizes are huge and most of the time there are not enough people in the market on the opposite side to fill those orders even when they break these big amounts into smaller amounts. Banks misplace their orders anyway and let price move away only to make price return back to the same place so they can fill the rest of their orders. Here's an example. So the banks will create this massive order over here. Price will move away, but then it will come back to fill the loss, to balance the books. Supply and demand trading is all about finding points where the banks have bought or sold and then jumping into trades when price returns to get into the positions right next to the banks. Supply and demand trading is a method where you find a strong, aggressive buying or selling in the market and mark these areas as a supply and demand zone. So for instance, you see this massive move here in the market. It leaves behind this demand zone. This is where the banks want to break their orders into smaller amounts. See, price goes up, comes back down, comes back down to this demand zone, and there it goes up again, comes back down to this demand zone, and massive jump up again, comes back down to this demand zone, and up again. And at the same time, it did it here. Massive momentum drop, created a supply zone, price comes back to mitigate the zone, and boom, taps into the supply zone. Supply and demand zones represent points where banks have placed significant numbers of buy and sell positions. How to find supply and demand zones? You must master the ability to find high probability zones, but this will be the difference between your success. Here, for instance, we have this massive drop, leaves behind a supply zone, drops all the way to the bottom, then we have this massive momentum candle to the upside, leaves behind the demand zone. Price goes up, taps into this supply zone, drops down, taps into this demand zone. Price pumps up again, leaves behind another demand, comes back, taps into that, leaves behind a supply, taps into that, leaves behind a demand, taps into that, pumps up, creates this rally based drop, leaves behind a supply, taps into this demand to tap into this supply. Are you starting to see the structure of the market and how these banks actually operate? These are important supply and demand rules, so pay close attention. Look for big momentum price, either up or down, 
it reveals the bank's buying or selling, which means a supply or demand must exist at the area of buying power. So we have a supply zone over here. We want to look for a drop away from either a momentum candle or consolidation base. So we have a base here and then we have this drop away from the base. Leaves behind the supply zone. Price comes all the way down. It's come all the way back to this zone to recover all those lost orders. Mitigates this zone and then carries on its journey in the trend. Demand zones. Look for a large move up from a momentum candle or a base. So here's another example of a base or consolidation. Then we have this massive momentum candle. Leaves behind the demand zone. Price goes up, comes down, and it does the same thing again. But this time it wasn't a base. It just made a move away with a single momentum candle, a big institutional candle, and leaves behind another demand zone. The strength of the movement away from a supply or demand zone is not a determining factor in how strong a zone is. As long as the zone has at least one large bullish or bearish candle moving away from it, it's valid for trading. I'll give you an example. So if we see these massive candles, these momentum candles, which I've chatted about in my other supply and demand videos, we know that it's going to leave behind a zone. We have this massive momentum candle, leaves behind a demand zone, creates this rally, then a base over here, and then we have this massive momentum candle to the downside. Taps into this demand zone, comes up a little bit, breaks actually below it, get more liquidity, then price goes up to make its way to tap into this supply zone to recoup all those orders. Supply and demand zones that form a base usually result in more successful trades than those that form a single candle. So this is a base. So these are more solid zones than these, for instance. And you can see that's why price broke straight through this zone. A base zone is a stronger zone because a lot of traders were caught in the wrong side before it made its move. There is more liquidity created at base zones. So when we have these drop base drop and price comes up to mitigate this zone, it's more likely that this zone is going to hold. On the other hand, a single candle zone is a weaker zone because not a lot of traders were caught on the wrong side of the markets. Even though price did respect the zone and carried on up. How to draw supply and demand zones. Here is a supply zone. The last, so we've got this massive drop of this institutional candle. We want to focus on the last bullish candle before this massive bearish institutional candle. We see it's a base, so we know price is going to come back, hold this level, tap into it, and carry on down. So here's a zoomed up version. We have this massive bearish momentum candle. The previous bullish candle that was left behind. We measure the top and the bottom. And that becomes our zone. Here's another example. So we have this base, this drop leaves behind the last bullish candle. And we want to measure out the open of the last bullish candle and the most recent high before the drop. Measures out the zone, price comes in, mitigates it and carries on down. So here's an example. We've got this drop. We want to measure out the low and the high of that candle before the drop. Here's a demand zone example. We want to focus on the last bearish candle before this massive rally up with this bullish momentum candle. As you can see here, this bullish momentum candle, and we've left behind this indecision candle, which is a bearish candle. We measure out the top and the bottom, and we get our zone. Here's another example. We want to focus on the most recent low before the rally and the open of the last bearish candle before the bullish institutional move. Shoots up, come back, mitigates exactly in the zone and carries on the trend. This is extremely important to pay attention. The candle you're drawing the demand zone off needs to be bearish. The candle you're drawing the supply zone off needs to be bullish. Banks won't be placing trades that are in the direction of the trade they are placing. 
If the current candle is bullish, the banks won't be placing buy trades. If the current candle is bearish, the banks won't be placing sell trades. Banks would have placed the opposite order compared to the direction they intended to move into. Two key rules to find the right zones. Number one, supply and demand zones that have been created more recently are far more effective than trading zones that were created long time ago. Number two, supply and demand zones only hold their power on a one-time use basis. When the price reacts off this zone, it loses its power. The probabilities become lower after the first time. Only when a zone forms on the top or bottom of a consolidation or range. In this case, price will react off this level two to three times since. Once the consolidation is over, the zone loses its power. So for instance, wherever we've got these bases or consolidation zones happening in the market, and you can see this price tapping into the zone down, tapping into the zone down, this is how the banks are splitting up their orders. Understanding the psychology of the institutional architecture in the market will increase your probability of getting into winning trades alongside the banks. So let us have a quick look at the actual market. I'm going to go to a weekly time frame on Bitcoin. Two years ago in November, price made this massive move up and it left behind this base. Massive momentum candles up. So the previous bearish candle, we marked that candle out. Now it took two years for price to come back to the zone, but finally it is back to the zone. Once we've got that, we can zoom up into a lower time frame. So we know that price is actually hitting demand zone tapping into the zone. And you can see over here, we've got this range that I was talking about earlier. So price keeps coming back into the zone. So price is literally ping ponging between these zones, breaking up its orders and making profits on the way up to each zone, cashing in, coming up, cashing in, cashing in, cashing in, cashing in. Here is a perfect example. So price consolidates over here. Then we have this massive move to the upside with this bullish momentum candle. It leaves behind a demand zone, rally, base, rally, leaves behind another demand zone, comes back up, then comes back to mitigate this zone, comes back up and then mitigates this zone again. Also, we have liquidity building up over here. So we know price has to break this level, hits this zone, makes its way up, and then price proceeds to come all the way back to this original demand zone taps into this zone and you would have had a wonderful entry over here stop loss underneath the zone entry at the zone targeting this zone over here because you can see this is an area price has touched everywhere and that would be a perfect entry guys i just quickly wanted to bring this news to you so i've just checked the chart it's a couple of hours later and as you can see guys have a look at this very closely price responded exactly off of our prediction and has hit our exact targets with this long wick. So it came to this water block, hit the water block and actually went all the way up to our zone making a 6%. So you see guys, price respects these zones, it reacts off these zones. And because if this was our consolidation zone, our base, we knew it was a very strong zone. Came all the way back, hit it and pumped up, boom, hit our targets. Hope you're all starting to see the power of supply and demand trading and how effective it is to use to your advantage. If you enjoyed this video, click on this next video to learn more about institutional secrets.